ang ating pong tutunghayan na uh, aralin ay nangyari nung batang bata pa lang ang uh, Christianity. The faith was just beginning to uh, develop an identity apart from Judaism. There were many new things, many revelations. The situation, theologically speaking, was very liquid. And then we meet a most interesting man, Cornelius. At yan ang ating pag-aaral ngayon, pinamagatan natin, something about Cornelius. Panginoon, salamat sapagkat kayo ay patuloy na nagtuturo sa amin sa pamamagitan ng matagal nang nasulat. Pero sa aming paglagu sa iyo, dinadagdagan mo ang pangunawa namin. So we ask you, Father, to be our speaker, our teacher, our healer, our light, our friend. Nawa ang aming pag-aaralan ay hindi lang makadagdag sa aming alam, hindi lang maging pag-uulit ng dating alam na, kundi makakita kami ng mga bagong paraan para ito buhayin sa pang-araw-araw naming buhay. Kaya, Panginoon, kayo po ang maging tagapagsalita at wala nang iba. We ask you to empower us to hear, to understand, and to live by your words. Protect us from all harm, from all works of evil men and evil spirits. Protect even our households. At nawa, Panginoon, yung iyo pong pagpapagaling sa katawan, sa emosyon, sa espiritu, maranasan naming lahat. Sit on your throne of power and glory. Dispense blessings to your people and accept our offering, our love, our gratitude, and our worship. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Teacher, we pray. Acts 10, 1 to 2. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius who was the captain of a group of soldiers called the Italian Unit. Cornelius was a very religious man. He worshipped God, and so did everyone else who lived in his house. He had given a lot of money to the poor and was always praying to God. Isang kakaibang karakter ang namit natin ngayon sa pagbabasang ito, sapagkat itong si Cornelius na tinutukoy ay hindi hudyo, hindi rin siya kristyano, sa katunayan isa siyang uh, kawal, isang opisyal ng Roman army. At ang kanyang uh, grupo ay naka talaga naka-assign dito sa Caesarea kung saan sila ay naliligid ng maraming mga mana ng palataya ng Panginoong Jesus. Ang sinabi tungkol sa lalaking ito that he was a Roman officer. What we know is that he is non-Jewish, non-Christian, that he was a Gentile. Kakaiba. But he was religious. And he was worshiping God, the God of the Bible the God who is the maker of heaven and earth, at dahil sa kanyang mainit na pagsamba sa Diyos, ang buong sambahayan niya, maaaring hindi lang niya pamilya, kundi pati ang mga tauhan doon, at lahat ng sakop niya, ay sumasamba rin sa kanyang pangunguna, at hindi lang yon siya ay mapagkawang gawa, at alam na alam, at kinikilala, at pinararangalan ng Diyos sa langit, ang mga mabubuti niyang gawa, lalong-lalo, ang pagbibigay sa mahihirap. Ito ang napaka-interesting character na si Cornelius. There is really something about him. He worshipped God. He worshipped the God of Israel, the God of the universe, but not in a Jewish or Christian way. Meron siyang sariling paraan. He led his house in worshipping God. It was a very godly leadership. And you know, many people seldom develop spirituality or faith apart from being led and this Cornelius was leading his entire household. He was also very, very prayerful. Acts 10, 3 to 4. One afternoon, Cornelius had a vision. He saw an angel from God coming to him and calling him by name. Cornelius was surprised and stared at the angel. Then he asked, What is this all about? The angel answered, God has heard your prayers and knows about your gifts to the poor. Akala natin eh, magpapakita lang ang Diyos o ang hilang Diyos doon sa malinaw na malinaw na Jewish or Christian. Heto itong isang taong itong hindi malaman kung saan siya kasali, pero siya ay pinapuntahan ang Diyos sa isang anghel, nagpakita ang anghel at nakipag-usap, at tinawag pa siya sa kanyang pangalan. Napaka-personal. At sabi nitong si Cornelius, tungkol po saan ang dalaw na ito? Ano ba ang nangyayari? At napakalinaw ng sinabi na anghel, 
dininig at dinidinig ng Diyos sa iyo mga dalangin. At alam na alam niya ang ginagawa mong kabutihan sa mahihirap. So the faith, worship, prayer, and good deeds of Cornelius were honored by God, though he was not Jewish and he was not formally a Christian. What's more, his gifts were emphasized. Talaga ang Panginoon natutuwa sa matutulungin eh, sa mga mahihirap. Acts 10, 5 to 8. Sabi ng Angelo, itong mission ko, bakit ako narito? Send some men to Joppa for a man named Simon Peter. After saying this, the angel left. Cornelius called in two of his servants and one of his soldiers who worshipped God. He explained everything to them and sent them off to Joppa. Yan ang misyon, sabi. Papuntahan mo, ipasundo mo si Pedro. Nandyan lang, one day's journey. At papuntahin mo sa'yo. Meron akong ipapasabi sa'yo sa pamamagitan niya. Nagbigay pa ng address actually, yung anghel. So ang ginawa nitong uh, si Cornelius, nagutos sa kanya mga tauhan, pinasamahan sa isang kawal na tulad din niya, mana ng palataya. Can you imagine in the Roman army that was being uh, demonized by the believers in Israel, may mga believers. At yun ang pinasama. So Cornelius entrusted the task to a fellow believer. Acts 10, 9 to 16. The next day about noon, these men were coming near Joppa. Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray and became very hungry. While the food was being prepared, he fell sound asleep and had a vision. He saw heaven open and something came down like a huge sheet held up by its four corners. In it were all kinds of animals, snakes and birds. A voice said to him, Peter, get up, kill this and eat them. But Peter said, Lord, I can't do that. I've never eaten anything that is unclean and not fit to eat. The voice said to him again, When God says that something can be used for food, don't say it isn't fit to eat. I'm reading from the contemporary English version. Ito namang si Peter, nandun naman sa Jopa, at nasa bahay ng may bahay. Bisita lang siya. Inabot ng gutom nung katanghali ang tapat kung kailan naman paparating na sa kanang tarangkahan yung mga inutusan ni Cornelius. Umakyat siya sa may bubungan at doon ay nakatulog. Ang mga bubong po sa Israel ay flat at para mga asotea o balcony. May mga habong na tela yon kaya masarap doon ang hangin at masarap doon magpahinga. Yun ang tinatawag ko minsan upper room. Kung yung lugar na yon ay nilagyan ng kaprasong kwarto, diningdingan at binubungan, parang penthouse. Doon nakatulog si Pedro. Nagugutom siya, tandaan nyo, nagluluto sa baba at habang naaamoy niya ang pagkaing niluluto at gutom pa naman siya, nagkaroon siya ng pangitain tuko sa pagkain. Kaya lang parang menu sa Chinese restaurant, ang daming pwedeng kainin. May mga ahas, may mga ibon, lahat ng uri ng pwedeng kainin nandun. At pagkatapos, Parang bumababa yung isang tela na kwadrado na may humahawak sa apat na sulok. At nung tingnan niya yung laman nun, nandun yung mga iba't ibang uri na ito ng mga hayop. At sabi nung tinig galing sa langit, Oh, ihanda mo na sila, i-dress mo na yung mga chicken, scale the fish, do something, and eat them. At sabi ni Pero, naku, 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 hindi ko ako kumakain ng ganyan, marumi Bawal po sa amin yan. Wala sa aming tradisyon na kumakain ng unclean food kasi kami mga Jews, Gentiles lang yung gumagawa niyan. At sabi naman noong boses, magdahan-daha ka ng pagsasalita. Kahit anong sinasabi ng Diyos sa pwedeng kainin, kainin mo. Hindi mo sasabihin sa akin yung nakaugalian ninyo, tradisyon nyo, batas nyo. Diyos ang batas. At siya ang nagsasabi.